So guys, the new year has just begun and so today I'm here with the first update episode on the brand new perfume launches of 2023. So keep on watching to find out everything about them and don't forget to subscribe to my channel right now if you're here for the first time as well as please give this video a huge thumbs up if you love finding out about brand new perfume releases. And once you're done with that, we can get started! Hello and welcome everyone to the first video of 2023. I'm a bit sick so I apologize if I sound a bit off but I'm still very excited to be sharing with you and updating you about brand new perfume releases of 2023 that has just recently been launched. So without any further ado, let's dive right into this top 10 list of the newest fragrances of 2023. And the first one I want to talk about is by the brand Mugler. This is the flanker of their signature and legendary perfume angel that you might remember I'm not the biggest fan of. The only flanker of it that I liked was Angel Eau Carissier, a limited edition of um, 2019, if I'm not wrong, and I really liked how fruity and really exotic it was, but uh, the traditional, you know, super sweet, patchouli angel is not necessarily my thing, yet this new release definitely sounds very interesting. Interesting. So first let me tell you what the official description says and this is the soul of an angel reinvented. An angel you don't expect, a pure elixir that expresses the high-tended femininity of today's fearless superwoman. Innocent but powerful, down-to-earth but unusual, ultra-sharp yet enveloping, with angel elixir and you star is born. A completely original woody floral gourmand fragrance that reinvents what makes angel eau de parfum so unique. Here, angel's signature indulgence transforms into a floral milky way encapsulated in Mugler's iconic star-shaped bottle transforming into a bewitching navy blue. That is a bit more, you know, traditional for this fragrance because last year they released like a pinkish bottle which was a bit more heavy on the berry note so now they kind of go back to the red. So a shimmering spark of metallic spices, an ethereal milky floral bouquet designed by Mugler, a nebula of luscious vanilla, in the fusion, enchanted with the cutting edge woody note of Ambex stream. Angel Alexia is more than just a fragrance, it is a catalyst of rethinking your reality because the real world is not enough. Well, it can be a bit too much, I won't lie. But anyway, let's look into the nest. There is pink pepper, sandalwood, ylang ylang, jasmine, orange blossom, ambe extreme and bourbon vanilla in this fragrance. And first things first, just looking at the notes breakdown, I'm reminded of two perfumes. But one of them is from the exclusive Chanel's collection. It's called Bouille de if I'm not wrong. So there is also this ylang ylang scented woodiness in there and if they are similar then I'm there for it but here is also amber extreme and it's kind of like a popular amber molecule that can be a little bit too harsh to overpower even cutting edge and masculine so I'm very very careful with it but it definitely prolongs the wear of the fragrance it intensifies it so I think it's gonna be a loud fragrance for sure there is no signature patchouli for Angel which is a bit disappointing but we shall see where it takes us I'm excited for it and if uh, it is similar to Boy de Nil or another fragrance that I am reminded uh, of looking at the notes pyramid is actually Samsara by Guerlain, which is a phenomenal sandalwood perfume with Ylang Ylang in there. So let's just wait a moment. I'm sure it will appear in Germany and I will check it out. By the way, if you would like to get an updated, you know, full review on any of the mentioned fragrances today, please let me know below. But let's move on to another perfume, another flanker, this time from Lincoln and their perfume La Nuit Trésor called Fleur de Nuit. So if I'm not wrong, it's actually like a night flower and 
It features less notes than the previous fragrance, but they excite me maybe even more. So we got patchouli macchiato with the rose tuberose and jasmine in here, and you can only guess which fragrance I'm thinking of looking at uh, macchiato and rose. So did you get it? Of course, it's my beloved Intense Cafe by Montel, because in there we have coffee bean and rose, and if this comes at least a bit close to that fragrance, then I probably will get it. Although I'm not the biggest fan of this line just because it always was too much for me, too sweet, too synthetic, too artificial basically, although I have a flavor from it and it's not like in the darker bottle collection. It's this uh, Musk Diamond with which I fell in love at first sniff. I love the iridescent bottle and this a little bit playful, fruity and so milky and you know like musky fragrance. The, its flanker is not the best though, so I'm excited for this new release, especially macchiato note, it's not, you know, that typical, so yeah, they definitely pulled a trigger for me. But anyway, let's talk about another flanker, we got a few today, and I also have a mix of designer and niche fragrances, so it will be, you know, just uh, something for everyone, and uh, this time it's Carolina Herrera and it's Stiletto Good Girl Blush which is the release of 2023, and it says that it is a delicate reinterpretation of Carolina Herrera's iconic fragrance, softer and more playful than ever. With a romantic sensuality, the fragrance expresses the super power of modern femininity and reveals another facet of the unique character of today's independent woman. Good Girl is unthinkable without the unmistakable stiletto, which is a symbol of female empowerment. So the bottle has a beautiful finish in soft powder pink, making it an absolute eye-catcher. I agree on that, although the notes are very, very simple, even less than in the previous perfume. Bergamot, peony and vanilla is what we have here. And I won't lie, I kind of enjoyed the Stiletto Good Girl collection by Carolina Herrera because uh, it is recognizable, it's a great, uh, you know, mass appealing perfume and I especially love the red bottle. I should have bought it actually because although this pink one sounds and looks very nice, I think it's gonna be too simple for me, but we shall see. Maybe it's gonna be something a bit more wearable for the everyday and maybe summer time. So if you own any of these stilettos, let me know what's your favorite. And we are moving on to kind of designer slash niche brand and the exclusive collection by Guerlain. So this is the brand that I love so much. Much. It's probably one of my top favorites, uh, but ever since they kind of rebranded and relaunched their exclusive French that they took away from Douglas in Frankfurt, I'm a bit disappointed because they raised their pricing, so oh my god, I don't know who of perfume lovers can actually purchase it, probably bloggers with more income than me, but it's such a shame because I love this brand, I love their signature, and I love the exclusive French before it was actually not that's super expensive and pricey, but I think they did maybe a right thing, so now really, you know, wealthy people can actually purchase something very expensive and stand out, because, uh, yeah, it's definitely not for everyone, but anyway, Guerlain perfumer drew inspiration from Henry Matisse's captivating, colorful creations and Jasmine Bonheur Joyful Jasmine is composed of a joyful composition of notes, including bright orange symbolized by apricot and uh, lively violet represented by pink iris color, as well as uh, soft pink roses set of the colorful fragrance of Jasmine interwined with the fragrance of Guerlain to create a happy atmosphere. Jasmine and roses are also the most common floral fragrances and fragrances. I think they meant notes and fragrances. And they are also one of the six beloved fragrances of Guerlain's exclusive fragrance, Guerlainade. So they have like this signature perfume. Since the brand was founded, Guerlainade fragrance has been a symbol of Guerlain's fragrances and Jasmine Bonheur, probably I'm totally saying the name wrong, so just in case I do, and there is no mistake about that, let me know how to say it semi-correctly and I might practice. Anyway, Delightful Jasmine combines various jasmine flowers used in fragrances world to sublimate the aroma of jasmine. Guerlain sourced jasmine macroflora from 
three different locations such as grass, calabria and India to add a rich fruity note to the composition, creating a masterpiece of exceptional quality. It exudes a more floral, sensual, sunny facet, exuding a scent of jasmine, a small Indian flower that resembles orange blossom. Jasmine is picked by hand at dawn to preserve the freshness of the petals before the sun hits and Garlene only extracts the essence of the petals into jasmine essence to reveal its delicate fragrance. So it sounds right like my um, type of perfume, you know, with the powderiness of violet and iris, with freshness of uh, citrusy notes, addition of apricot and, you know, this uh, intensified jasmine. I would love to smell it, but probably I needed to blind buy it for that and, you know, I'm not into that kind of game. So we shall see if uh, I actually will find a way to get my nose onto this uh, relaunched uh, Guerlain's exclusive French. If you have already smelled their fragrances, please let me know if there is something that justifies such pricing. But we are moving on to a very exciting release because it's not a flanker. This time it's a Pla launch from Perfumes de Marley and I was so excited to see this fragrance in kind of like a matte white flacon, if I'm not wrong, that is called Valea. So, the notes in there are actually very, um, you know, <laughs> I would say quiet. <laughs> there is no note that I would be attached to and typically I love to see something that is unusual, but in here everything is so, you know, like classy and elegant. So it says a luminous aura and at the same time an um, intangible softness. A little bit similar to the previous descriptions, don't you think? Like the scent of fresh cotton, the layer of the folds, essential fragrance, neons dedicated to the power of femininity. Who would have thought that, right? Anyway, femininity kind of plays an important role these days, so what do you think, guys? Anyway, beyond the artificial and beyond time, it awakes an intimate feeling, a universal emotion, a deep breath of mindfulness. Mindfulness. So its formula evokes uh, the delicate and pure skin of a woman in all its beauty. One of the biggest challenges was to create a fragrance that is fresh and delicate, but at the same time very powerful and expressive. Valaya is reminiscent of the feel of cotton against the skin. A cocoon-like perfume that is sensual and elegant at the same time. Oh, at the same time. Wow, I can't read. I can't think. Thanks God I'm able to speak. Anyway, a white perfume full of contrast that is delic delicate and yet incredibly alluring. So everything should be delicate and at the same time powerful. Well, guys, this fragrance seems to be very, very, how should I say, safe. Looking at the notes, you might be like, oh yeah, all right, nothing that uh, might actually scare anyone. Anyway, mandarin, orange, peach, bergamot, orange blossom, love the valley, floral notes, vetiva, vanilla, musk, woodsy notes and ambergris is what we get in here and I expect it to be clean, musky, a little bit fruity, a little bit of that, a little bit of this and nothing right in your face, but this brand is actually known for such bangers as Delina, as Layton and many others. You name your favorite and let me know what it is below, but I'm still excited for it. Anyway, the fragrance I'm most excited about is a flanker, a flanker of a designer brand. Yeah, you won't believe it, but um, Pouring Armani, Giorgio Armani actually released this perfume my way a few years ago and I loved it for, you know, a very intense white um, floral bouquet in there with tuberose at the center. It was very strong, almost uh, with an animalic um, edge and this is my way perfume. I like the color of the bottle, very beautiful. It might be actually my first my way in the collection. And that's because they added one note that kind of changed the game for me. And if I will be able to actually smell it, which is Iris Palida, very high quality Iris note. Anyway, Iris is very expensive and Iris Palida is very you know, high quality Iris. So other than that, we have signature of orange blossom and tuberose in here with uh, citruses, with musk, with vanilla, with woods. So if it's gonna be stronger and powdery version of my way, I'm there for it. Anyway, anyway, another fragrance, maybe 
not that exciting but still a nice bottle and the notes only three but they might work really nicely is Hugo Boss's the scent magnetic for her with osmanthus which is not a typical note for you know like mainstream perfumery because it is um, something that you can find in niche fragrances because the note is unique it's a Asian flower with uh, an apricot and leathery facet, so you can really push on it. And then there are amber seeds, which are amazing if you want to create the best texture with white musk that will even add more of it. So we shall see how it smells. I think it's gonna be nice. But another fragrance, well, this time we are going back to those luxurious pretty collections of designer brands, is Armani's Privé Santal Dansha. So I think if someone loves sandalwood, it's gonna be, you know, something person might consider checking out. I like it. This is the collection that never, you know, blew me away. So I will check out this fragrance with citrusy notes, with musk, with incense and many different uh, woody notes, cardamom. And uh, it sounds like something a bit more incensey and mysterious, not just, you know, a creamy sandalwood, but um, I got for you two cherries um, to finish up this video, one of which is from the brand that is called Renz Pazalia that I had a pleasure to discover for myself last year. Now I can't really find the bottles sitting right here, but I have like a full collection overview for you to check out because this brand um, has a very creative and at the same time monster-like performing fragrances and Lorenzo is very humble and great perfumer. Oh yeah, I have some... Okay, hold on. I will actually show you two of my favorites. So this is Evil, Evil Angel. I love the notes. There are actually thousands of them. You can look up uh, online or just check out my... Yeah, check out my video to find out more about this brand. It's really worth it, especially if you are into beast mode perfumes. But Evil Angel is my signature scent. And uh, as I brought it home, my mom actually sprayed it on her left. And when I came into the living room next day, I could smell it. So it is powerful, intense, powdery, fresh, juicy, green, crisp, very unique. Another one, something deep, sexy, kind of like this sugared, caramelized, boozy patchouli is Van Pyrum. So if you are into, you know, gourmands that are very <laughs> complimenting getting, then I highly recommend to check this one out. But they've just launched uh, the fragrance Cherry Ink. And okay, I will tell you, I've already smelled it, kind of like um, in the preview last summer and it was amazing. It was like a cherry, but you know, cherry at another level with bergamot, with papa, with rome. I like how he plays with alcoholic notes and in case you are a boozy lover like I am, check out first of all my top list of boozy fragrances that I own because I have a lot of them. And also this fragrance with a note of red wine, with a note of ink, myrrh, rose jasmine, lily of the valley, mimosa, spices such as vanilla, tonka, and woods with patchouli and oud. It sounds like a dream. I cannot wait to get it. And if you're interested in my full review on this perfume, please let me know. But let me know if you've checked out my review on this brand and have tried any of the samples and what is the fragrance from Lorenz Pazalia brand that is getting more and more attention for a good reason because it's totally worth it is your favorite but anyway the cherry on top the cherry of today's video is okay as i saw it i was like am i hallucinating and am i so sick or is it true that tom ford and yes 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 you heard me right tom ford released a flanker well this is how i call its new release cherry smoke the flanker of their <laughs> probably most hyped fragrances of all times, uh, Lost Cherry. Would you agree <laughs> with such a description? Well, Lost Cherry is something that is very, very special. It kind of brought Cherry back into the perfume game. People got obsessed with it. It sold out because it was released as a limited edition. They brought it back and uh, left in the general catalog because this is one of the best cherry fragrances out there for sure. It's sweeter, it has this marzipan note to it, and at the same time it's not too, you know, edible, yet it is delicious and gourmand, pleasant to wear, pleasant to smell, quite universal, but rather winter appropriate unisex perfume for the lovers of, you know, cherries, uh, of amaretto, of uh, marzipan, and just, you know, 
these gorgeous mouth watering fragrances so the new release actually sounds a bit different there are less notes so we have olive olive i mean like when i saw it i was like yeah this is kind of like that example when i'm attached to the specific note there is of course note of smoke in here because it's like a cherry smoke so i think it's going to be a less uh, fruity, less sweet. We have an apricot note in here with a samantha, so probably they will play on maybe even a sour element and then saffron, so it will add more to the spi smokiness, it's spice and metallic, woody notes and leather. So I think it's going to be darker, more intense, something that you might expect from a fragrance called Cherry Smoke. So the new fragrance opens with an exquisite scent of dark cherry flavor soundtrack, in uh, in enhanced by exotics from this. The fragrance, uh, the fragrant white flowers of Asmanthus exude facets of apricot, olive and leather, while a precious smoke to wood accord tantalizes with heated vibrancy and a simmering blazing pull. So I'm sure people will be really excited about it. Let me know if you are or which of the matching perfumes sounded most interesting to you. Have you already heard about other new perfume launches? Let me know if you would like uh, me to keep you updated about new perfume releases in 2020 like I did in 2022. Whatever it is, please comment down below. I love to get your feedback. And anytime I'm brainstorming, you know, ideas for my content, I like to read your comments. So feel free to let me know what are you interested in this year. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and activate the bell to be notified anytime I post something new. Follow me on my social media to stay in touch and check out the description box for more helpful information. And of course, please give this video a huge thumbs up if you found it helpful. And on that note, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to have a great year. Thank you so much for your support and please stay tuned and smell good. We will see each other next one really soon. Bye guys.